Let's look at another topic in strategic management called industrial analysis. Yeah, you analyze the industry as a whole. It's what we are going to look at. Industrial analysis, it involves the use of Michael Potter's five competitive forces. They are five and we are going to look at each of them in details. The first competitive force is the threat of new entrants. New entrants are potential competitors. They are not yet existing, like they haven't entered the market, but they're capable of entering the market if they choose to. Yeah. So there are some barriers that can stop new entrants from entering the market. And the first one is the economies of scale. Economies of scale, those are the advantages that organizations get when they operate in a very large scale. For example, the discount on bulk on bulk purchases and then the advantages that are given to them by the government and very many other things. So if the existing companies or organizations are operating on a large scale, it will scare new entrants from entering that particular industry. But if they're operating on a small scale, they will have very many new entrants in the industry. Another barrier to new entrants is capital requirements. A lot of money is required or a lot of capital is required in order for new firms to enter a particular industry. You are likely to have a few new entrants, yeah, it, it, especially the capital that is required for unrecoverable expenditures. For example, the advertising, the research and development costs and all that. Another threat to new entrants or barrier is the switching costs. If a lot of money is required in order for you to switch from the industry that you've been in to a new industry, you are likely not to switch, like you stay where you are. If you've been in the fishing industry and you feel like you want to enter the music industry, if there are a lot of switching costs that you have to incur, you're likely not to switch. Yeah, so switching costs is a barrier to new entrants. Another barrier is government policies. The government can restrict the entry of new organizations in a particular industry by asking for licenses and then the long, the long process that the organizations have to go through in order for them to enter a particular industry. Another threat to new entrants is brand loyalty, whereby customers want goods and services of already established companies. For example, for, for the telecommunication companies, when new companies come in, for example, AfriCell, they really get a hard time in getting customers because we, we want things that have been established that already have a name, MTN, Airtel. So when other companies come, we really take long to adopt. So that can stop new companies from entering a particular industry because of brand loyalty. And then another another barrier is distribution channels access. Yeah, new firms always face a problem of accessing distribution channels. For example, the supermarkets and the retailers, they also want to sell goods of already established companies, yeah. If if it if it's detergent, they would they, they would love to sell Omo, Nomi, Magic that for for companies that have been there that already have their name. So if you come up with a new detergent, you get a hard time in convincing the supermarkets, the wholesalers, the retailers to distribute your product. Yeah, because they, they always want to sell what the customers want. And customers want goods for established companies. And the last one is product differentiation. Product differentiation, it's about producing or having something that is unique from the competitor's products and then services. Yeah, and new entrants may fail to come up with ways of making their things unique from those of competitors. So they'll end up not entering a particular industry because they cannot differentiate their products from those of the competitors. Yeah.
another force we have is the bargaining power of buyers buyers can affect the industry by forcing the prices to go down if they over bargain you can tell a customer that the product is 10k and they will tell you i have 5k but when you really want to make a sale you just have to reduce on the price yes yeah, so the bargaining power of buyers can affect the industry and a buyer or group of buyers is powerful in some of, if some of the following factors hold true first is the buying volumes if the if the customer is buying in large quantities you will be required to reduce on the prices so that they can be able to take your products in large amounts then the buyer's information if the buyer knows somewhere else whereby the product is cheaper yeah you will have to reduce on the price of the product so that they can be able to buy from you then price sensitivity whereby the buyers are so sensitive to the prices if you if you increase the prices maybe by 100 shillings they'll shift and they'll they will switch to something else yeah another another factor is the customer's ability to use substitutes yeah if the if the if the product has very many substitutes you are likely to reduce on the price of the pro, of the product so that you can be able to get buyers for example For example if milk tea is expensive someone will opt for black tea but for products that have no substitutes the customers or the buyers will not have bargaining power for example salt has no substitute water has no substitute yeah another factor is backward integration when customers threat to supply the products or services to themselves for example agricultural products if you make matoke expensive they, they they will tell you if you do not reduce the price of matoke it's okay i'll go and plant my own matoke and then eat it for free so if they if there is backward integration then the customers will have bargaining power over over the seller over over the product then another factor is the switching costs if there is no cost involved between switching from your product to someone else's product or to the competitor's products customers are likely to have bargaining power over over your product if it does not cost me anything to switch from omo to erio i am likely to have bargaining power over omo because anytime i can change and use the other one because it's the, it's the same thing but Let me give an example of a university it can cost you if you are to switch from one university to another if you go to another university you either repeat or you pay money in order for you to continue like the way you were in the other university so the switching costs involved so it's the reason why students do not have bargaining power when it comes to education because the costs involved in switching yeah you'll have to get a new id and everything and the last factor is brand identity if you already established a brand for your product for example mukwano products they are already established customers will have less bargaining power another force is the substitutes or the threat of substitutes substitutes are those products that serve the same purpose to the customers as your products yeah and substitutes play a big role in determining the prices of the products because if you make your prices high customers will go to the next product they will substitute it with something else that serves the same purpose yeah if you make if 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 mtn data is is expensive people will switch to airtel data If I tell that is expensive they will switch to Leica data so there are always options yeah and those and those factors if Leica data is so cheap even Airtel might reduce call on their data cuz all customers might go away and they switch to Leica data yeah so the substitutes play a big role in determining the prices of the product in a particular industry 
and the the rate of substitutes is determined by the following. The first is the quality of substitutes. If the substitutes are of higher quality compared to your products, it is a very big problem. Then the second factor is the switching costs. If there are no costs involved in switching from your product to the substitutes, customers are likely to switch. Then another one is the relative price performance of substitute suppliers. If suppliers, if the substitutes are of a, a low price or they are cheaper than your products, customers are likely to switch to the next supplier. And another force is the bargaining power of suppliers whereby they can easily increase the prices of their supplies. Yeah, and the following the following factors, they determine the bargaining power of suppliers. First is switching costs. If the costs that, that, that are involved in, in you switching from one supplier to another, you are likely to stick to one even when they charge you high. Then another factor is the number of suppliers. If there are very few su suppliers or if there is one supplier, they are likely to have a, a high bargaining power. Another factor is forward integration. Forward integration, it's when the company integrates with the distribution channels or with the market, or they get in touch with the customers themselves. So if your, if your suppliers threat to do forward integration, they are likely to have a high bargaining power over you because if they do forward integration, it, it will mean that Instead of supplying to you and you sell to the customers, they will do it themselves. Yeah, they will supply to the customers themselves at a cheaper price. Yeah, so if they threat, if they if there is a threat of forward integration, the suppliers will have a high bargaining power. Then another one, another factor is the importance to the supplier. If you are not so important to the supplier, the supplier is likely to have a high bargaining power over you. And then another factor is the knowledge of the product value to the buyer. Another force is the existing rivalry or existing competition. Yeah, and uh, these are the other are the factors that determine the existing competition. First is the number of competitors. If the, if there are very many competitors in a particular industry, it will mean that the competition is high. Then another factor we have is the exit, exit barriers. Exit barriers where, where, whereby companies cannot easily get out of a particular industry because of very many factors. can be for political reasons, for economic re re reasons, whereby they invested in machines that cannot be used for something else. So it will keep the companies in that particular industry. So you'll have high competition. Then the concentration of the competitors, whereby all competitors are in the same place, you will have high competition. For example, in Chikubo, they are all competing, but they're all on the same lane in the same area. So the competition is high. Yeah. Then um, the cost structure of the competitors, if the competitors incur less costs in operation and then production, they're likely to have cheap products or cheaper products compared to yours. So that will be high competition. And then another factor is the diversification of competitors, whereby the competitors sell very many things. Yeah, they deal in very many products, like the Mkwano products, there are very many, so they're likely to have more, more competition in that particular industry. Then the depreciation and switching costs. If the switching costs are high, yeah, competitors are likely to stay and not to switch to the next industry. So you'll have high competition. There. And that is all about the industrial analysis using Michael Potter's five forces model. And the five forces, we have the threat of new entrants. We have the threat of substitutes. We have the threat of 
existing rivalry or existing competitors. We have the bargaining power of suppliers and then the bargaining power of buyers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share with your friends and let's catch up in my next video.